Welcome everyone, and uh, this is video three in a basics of exploitation series. So if you're just jumping into this video, you've missed a little bit of what came before that, and that's analysis of the program here uh, that we are, are looking at. What you missed then is just the basic buffer overflow, analyzing it in IDA, catching the overflow in a debugger. And now what we're gonna look at is how the stack cookie or the stack guard is a compiler added mitigation that helps prevent these overflows. So basic buffer overflow program, uh, just to, to quick rehash on this, we have a, a stack based buffer, a local variable declared in this order. And, and we saw in the previous analysis that it's, it's then the buffer on the stack and then the local variable. So if we overflow this buffer, not only can we overflow the return address, but we can just overflow this local variable or we have to on our way to overflow that return address. Stir copy is gonna copy and tell a null byte. So it's unrestricted, it's unbounded. Whatever we provide as an argument, it's gonna to continue to copy. So we've provided just enough data in the last video to catch that overflow by um, you know, sending a specific four bytes to place that in the return address to you know, demonstrate control of EIP. Okay, so what we're what I'm doing now is that when we compile the program, I'm removing the com the, the compiler argument slash gs dash, and what that will do then is when this program's compiled, it will add the stack cookie. Okay, so there's our compiled program. Let's look at this in Ida. Okay, so let's let's take a look at the disassembly because things have have actually changed quite a bit here from the previous version of the program that we analyzed. First of all you'll notice or take note that we're, we have an additional four bytes in the stack space that's allocated for main. Previously, it was 10 hex or 16 bytes. Now it's, it's additional four. Why is that? Well, that's because of the stack cookie. And you can see that the security cookie is moved into EAX. It's XORed with EBP. And then that value is, sto is stored in var four. So the security cookie, if we double click on this, you'll see that it has um, you know, some predefined data, although I do believe this gets populated at runtime. Um, and what that's doing then is by XORing that with whatever value EBP is, as part of the prolog, the stack cookie value can be moved into ECX, XORed again with, with EBP, and then the security cookie can be checked. The idea here being that with the XOR operation, we'll get the original value, so if any modification happened to the stack cookie, that value while it's on the stack, then the program, the operating system can say, likely something happened. There was, there was an overflow or somehow data got tampered with on the stack. Um, somebody tried to overwrite the stack cookie and then it can terminate the program. And if you, if you trace into this logic, eventually you'll see, um, you, you can kind of work out how this is being done. But for our purposes, all we really need to understand is that this stack cookie then is what's being calculated at the beginning as part of the prolog and then checked at the end. And if and only if that stack cookie is overwritten or modified one bit, the check will fail, the program will terminate. So that doesn't mean that a program is impervious to any sort of buffer overflow vulnerability. It just means that if the overflow is, if it has to go far enough, to overwrite the stack cookie, then it can be detected. And the stack cookie, as you're gonna find out here in just a moment, is gonna be positioned before the return address. So in order to subvert the flow of the program directly by overwriting that return address, you'd have to overwrite that stack cookie. Okay, so that's why there is that additional four bytes now of stack space allocated. So let's label this, because that will help us in our analysis. Now we can continue on and see that there's the XOR EAX and now the code looks very similar and that we have at var 10, we have what appears to be our buffer, right? So let's double click into this and let's convert this to an array. That'll make our analysis, I think a little bit easier. This will be 12 bytes. We'll convert it and we'll just call this buffer. Now you'll notice as we're looking at our stack frame, that it looks different. So not only do we have the stack cookie, the stack cookie is placed after the buffer. So if this buffer is overflown by one bit, that will modify the stack cookie value. 
our local variable var14. Let's go back to I to view A, right? We initialize that, I initialize that with 100 in, in base 10. That's right here. And so another change that was made by enabling those stack guard protections is that int A gets moved to be higher on the stack. So that way the buffer, if it's overflown, it can't overflow the local variable, but avoid messing with the stack cookie or, or, or corrupting the stack cookie. So you can see how the compiler optimized that to say, okay, if this buffer gets overflown at all, the stack cookie check will fail and the program will terminate upon trying to return from this function, right? So we do get a couple of protections in. You get the stack cookie check and you get variable reorganization. Now, what happens if you have multiple local variables and multiple buffers? Well, compile a program and find out, right? But the compiler will do its best to try to optimize that so that the stack cookie can do its job. Okay, uh, there we go. We can update our mem set. There's our, our stir copy. And let's see what this looks like in a debugger. Okay, for our debug setup, when debug launching the executable, we have the path executable. Executable name is the same, even though I modified the program. Arguments are the same. Um, although, uh, I guess if we think about this, right, we're going to have to overwrite things. Uh, I mean, there's more stack space now to clobber, but as you'll see here, you know, before we get to the return, we have to do the cookie check, and that's going to fail before the return. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll run this program. This is where our program is loaded into memory, E20000. So we'll set a breakpoint at E, uh, excuse me, E21000. There is our entry point. And let's go, so if we scroll down just a little bit, there's our, our return. I'm just going to set a breakpoint here. And now let's try to just run to that, to that ret. Ah, you see, there you go. Stack cookie check failure, right? Program terminated. We didn't get to the ret because in our attempt to overflow the buffer, corrupted the stack cookie that was checked before the program returns. And now the program terminates, right? So our, our attempt to exploit the program fails. Now, could again, could that not, could there, does this solve all the problems? No, certainly it does not. Um, perhaps there's enough buffers or enough local variables that the reorganization and the stack cookie, um, it just isn't able to catch all of the possible scenarios. But you certainly can see where enabling the stack cookie, it's done automatically by the compiler. In fact, we had to exp explicitly disable it in order to remove this, this safety guard. And so it's something that's done and added by the compiler. And so even if we're writing vulnerable code, you know, compilers can help with our security because they can add these sort of checks in. So it's also something to consider when you're looking at things from more of a secure software development life cycle. But again, that's a pretty, pretty loaded conversation and, and something that, you know, I wasn't going to get into here in this video. The purpose here was just to look at the effect that the stack guard has. So rearranging local variables, adding the stack cookie onto the stack, checking it, stopping execution if it determines that it was corrupt. That's really the essence of buffer overflows and their abuse. Uh, in the future videos here, we'll continue to build off of these concepts. So I hope you stay tuned and enjoy this playlist.